All right, Halos, welcome back. How's everyone doing? Uh, we are doing more uh, Final Fantasy 16 today, so yeah, let's just jump straight back into where we were previously. The Dalmechian government sues for peace. How shall we respond? If they're willing to accept their fault in the matter, I see no reason to refuse them. Still, we must insist on substantial reparations. Twinside stores are not as bottomless as reported. Aye, and we have many more mouths to feed. We shall just have to have the Dalmex empty their treasuries for us. Of course, none of this would have been possible without your timely intervention, Prince Olivier. Indeed, I doubt any of us would have had the courage to trade words with the mighty Titan, nor less the wit to win him over. The Empire owes you a great debt. May the blessing of the crystals go with you, your highness. May, May the, the blessing of the crystals, crystals go, go with you. Very good. Now, let us come to the question of precisely when the Dalmex will withdraw their troops. Dion's fire could rid us of them in mere moments. The men of the Fists will not withdraw until a peace treaty is concluded. So let us keep the negotiations open, give them time to gather what gold and trinkets they can, and once they deliver that which we demand, what worth is a piece of parchment? Uh, your Radiance, were Prince Dion to take the field, the enemy would surely send their own dominant to meet him. And while his highness would of course prevail, there would be heavy losses on both. You need not fear Hugo Kupka. He is engaged on the Western Front. Even were the Dalmex to send for him, he would not arrive in time. As much as I would enjoy witnessing a clash between Bahamut and Titans, it is not to be. And what of your subjects, Your Radiance? If the fighting spread to the city proper, the people would bear the brunt of it. There will be losses, it is true. Yet for every citizen who falls, another can be bred. For every home that burns, another can be built. The Empire will live on. Dion? Yes, sir. Prepare for battle. But, sire... Do not make me repeat myself. Return to your camp and await my orders. If that is your wish, your radiance, I shall depart at once. forgive you. What 
do the astrologers all go? The stars are in agreement, your radiance. The shadow of treachery hangs over Prince Dion. So Annabella's tales were true. You disappoint me, Dion. Them old apples were enough to curdle your gut. What on earth is Uncle Byron doing here? Only one way to find out. I'll have to pay the boys down in the backyard a visit to tell them thanks. Yeah, definitely is. Um, let me... Actually, I don't know if I can do it through the quest. Um, doesn't look like it. That's fine. Alright, let's quickly finish the side quest that we had in the previous part, and then the have been up to their we shall just one thing after another go and meet here. Byron on the, at the bottom there real quick. Just give me one Need second. Into the storm room. But yeah, we got some like backstory there. Some more, <laughs> some more stuff happening. Um, Alright. Oh, what a lovely Let's Christmas. Christmas. <clears throat> Anyone think Nigel was growing himself a rose garden? <laughs> Excuse me. Breakers send their thanks and their compliments. They were clearly very fond of Martel. They remembered her a after all these years. I suppose she was very kind, even to a tongue tied lummox like me. You were one of the good ones, Martel. Why did you have to die? She put everything into her work. She wasn't going to rest until we had fruit sweet enough to enjoy. And now we do. When she died, I named a sapling after her. And now it's a full-grown tree. Martel lives on through the fruit it bears. And through you. Her dream would have died with her, had you not kept it alive. That's something to be proud of. I, oh, I didn't do anything really, but thank you. You're kinder to me than I deserve. By the way, Otto's expecting some of your crop. And I wouldn't mind some of it either, if that's not too much to ask. Of course not. I'll see that you're both well provided for. They like your fruit, Martel. Isn't that wonderful? I'd say it's about time we planted you some siblings, don't you think? Alright. <clears throat> oh, we got some Martell apples displayed in Clyde's chambers. Nice. And a little bit of renown as well. Alright, let's go visit uh, Byron at the bottom of the. or at the docks, I guess, right? Let's head over there. Bolts, bolts from the blue. Oh, also, I nearly forgot. Let's go ahead and change our appearance of our sword as well, because we got the new sword, but it's still the old appearance, I believe, so. Instead of the Imperial Blade look, let's do uh, the new one. Grandstone. Ooh, that does look pretty cool, actually. Not gonna lie. Um, is there anything new that we've got in here? Looks like all the same stuff. We'll, we'll change it back to that. I think we'll change him back to normal as well, but um, I like the Rosarian gold, so we'll keep that. Alright, let's continue on. Oh yeah, that's a pretty cool looking sword. Lids moved into the storeroom. Made it work. Is the bottom split in? <laughs> Kinda, that is a little bit weird actually, but that's fine. Or maybe it's just, it's just the sheath. I'm not sure actually. Alright, Byron, where you at? There you are. What's up, my dude? 
Ah, my dear nephew, how I've missed you. <laughs> how did you find this place, Uncle? Through the good offices of young Sir Wade. He really is the most helpful fellow. As are you, I hear. The Guardians and those they freed tell the most outlandish tales of your heroics in Rosalith. Which is why I came, to learn the full truth of the matter. Sort the fact from the fiction, so to speak. You were working with the Guardians of the Flame to evacuate the people of Rosalith the Port Isolde. I was. I. Then I have questions for you. Please, come inside, Uncle. Gladly. Uh, you there? There are 2,000 gold talents in those chests. See that they're added to my nephew's coffers, would you? 2,000? <laughs> and I'm afraid that is all I know. A fleet sailing south past Port Isolde. Most intriguing. Forgive me for not being able to tell you more. I hadn't the faintest idea Coco withdrew wounded from Rosalith. Still less that my own nephew dealt the decisive blow. <laughs> what do you think, Vivian? I think, with this news of the Dalmechian fleet and recent reports of the Royalists' movements, that the final piece of the puzzle has fallen into place. Come here and I'll show you. It is known that Kupka's forces entered Rosaria via its unguarded coast. So can the same be said of your visitors from Walud? Certainly, her royal navy is famed for the efficiency with which it bears her knights from one battlefield to the next. And in the Ein Heyar, or Black Galleon, she boasts a vessel nigh as swift, and every bit as feared as the kingdom's legendary cavalry. A fitting flagship for a land apart, her naval presence being crucial to her ambitions beyond Ash. Yes. It seems safe to assume that the Royalists did indeed enter Rosaria from the sea. So then... Had you a vested interest in Titan's survival, whither would you take him? Why home to Drake's Fang, a place rich enough in ether to conjure the magics needed to mend his hurts? But would that not entail an arduous voyage around the Southern Cape? Let us say that the Royalists did put ashore with a mind to spirit Kupka away from under your very nose. Could that truly have been their plan for him? To load him aboard one of the ships flying Republican colors sighted off the coast near Port Isolde. To spend weeks at sea, being tossed hither and yon by unforgiving waves, his life hanging in the balance. No. The journey would mean Titan's death, and Kupka's faithful creatures would not allow it. So what then was the plan of our Waluda friends? Reports suggest they made not for the coast, but for the desert. And by cutting through the Velcroy, a party traveling light would have Titan back in his bed days before a galley could lurch into port. To wit, it was the Royalists, not the Republicans, who effected Hugo Kupka's safe retreat. I would stake your life on it. <laughs> Bold of you. So it was the Waluders who spirited the wretch away. Now I think about it, there was something a little strange about the ships I saw. The men seemed almost crestfallen, as if in mourning, as if they believed, or were made to believe, that their master was dead. <laughs> you have a keen mind, Lord Rosfield. And you have your answer. To find Kupka, you have merely to follow the royalist trail across the Velcroy. It may well have gone cold by now. But as they say in the Republic, all roads lead to Drake's Fang. Uh, allow me to accompany you part of the way. 
As luck would have it, I had intended to journey Candleward on business after visiting you here. The Fang would be but a short detour. I'd be glad of the company. Give me a moment to make ready. I need to tell my friends what we've learned. And where we're going. Very well, but be quick about it, my boy. Time waits for no man. All right, there we go. <clears throat> Speak with Otto. All right, let's do it. Mid's finished outfit in her little workshop. Otto, Kupka's at Drake's Fang. I'll be leaving before sunset. You're not going in there alone, are you? Don't worry. I'm not going there to destroy the Mother Crystal. All I'm after is Kupka's head. I won't risk any more than I have to. I promise. The Lanzer and the Fang are all Kupka's personal fiefdom. You have any trouble on the way? You ask for Rosina Dalimil. Some call her the Desert Hare. Who is she? An old associate of Sid's. And only Sid's. All I know is the name. And that they used to meet at the Dalimil Inn. We've heard nothing from her since he died. But I'm thinking maybe the new Sid might be able to bring her back into the fold. Thanks. I'll keep that in mind. So, uh, what about your uncle? I, I mean, he's welcome to stay, but... Don't look so worried. He'll be coming with me. Thank fuck for that. Gav, Otto, I'm leaving you two in charge. You can count on us. Alright. Sounds good. Return to Byron. Okay. All right, Uncle. I'm ready to depart. Shall we? We shall. Come, let us away to adventure. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> we do have the side quests we could do, but I think we're just going to continue on. Mm, there are two things over there, though. Uh, hmm. You know what? Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and do a couple side quests super fast. I'll try to knock them out really quickly, and then we can continue on with the main ones. Alright, where are we headed to? <coughs> Excuse me. Give them pilgrims nice and late. Uh, okay, over here, the left side. This place. We spend half a day getting here and... <sighs> Alright, uh, where is it exactly? Oh, yeah, a little bit left, okay. Oh, is it up there maybe? I go too far down? Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> Whoops. That's okay. We can, uh, oh, what's up, dude? Wait, is that Byron? Oh yeah, he's with us. That's cool. <laughs> uh, alright, potion. Looks like we're full on potion. Oh yeah, that's something I could have sold. Whoops. So where's it at then? A little bit farther up. Okay. Is that it? What is that on the ground there? Some people here. Yep, this looks like it. Cole. Cole. I'm glad you're in one piece. Just about. Sid, if you don't mind me asking, what are you doing here? Doris sent me to find you. She hasn't heard anything since the attack. She's been worried about you. I sent a runner to the dame in Northreach. The hideaway should have learned of our survival yesterday. Well, I'm here now. And it looks like you freed the bearers. Only some. The rest locked themselves in the slaver's carriage rather than fleeing when they had the chance. I want to help them, Sid. But we're barely in any state to protect those few we did save. You made the right decision. Now where's the carriage? The goblins may still be out there. You have duties to attend to here. See to the injured. I'll handle the rest. <sighs> Alright. Just follow the path to the south. You'll come across the carriage soon enough. And please, hurry. 
If the beastmen get to those bearers, the poor souls will be eaten alive. I won't let that happen. Thank you. And Sid, it's good to see you. Don't thank me just yet. Alright. <clears throat> Rescue the bearers to the south. Uh, okay. Down this way, it looks like. Oh, what the heck is that? That looks like a big boy. Does he have a shield or something? Oh no no no! That's just, it was just his arm. I was looking at it wrong. The wrong way. To get into the carriage. All right, stick him out. There we go. Accidentally took a hit there because I used my ability manually, but that's okay. We'll be alright. We're full on potions anyway, so next one that we grab is gonna instant instant heal us. Who are you? A friend. Are there any more survivors? Why didn't you flee with the others? If the goblins had made it through that door, you wouldn't have stood a chance. Why should we run? One miserable death's no worse than another. Perhaps. But we're here to give you another choice. Freedom, safety, the life you've been denied. Come with us. Let us protect you. Sid, I, I couldn't just let you... You weren't too late then. Thank the gods. This man risked his life to save yours. To give you a second chance. Fine. Do with us what you will. What we'll do with you is take you to safety. After that, it's up to you. Your lives are your own now. You can leave the rest to us, Sid. We'll get everyone back to the hideaway. Thank you. I'll let Doris know we're expecting new arrivals. All right, <clears throat> report to doors back at the hideaway. Let's do it. Sid, welcome back. A Stolas from the Dame arrived not long after you left. If I'd just waited a little longer, I might have been able to deal with things myself. Or maybe I wouldn't. I keep making the wrong decisions. Cole and the others got home safely. You made exactly the right decision. No, I was lucky. I've been tracking that slaver for months, and then I sent Cole and you after them woefully unprepared. What kind of leader sends people into danger without considering all the risks? I should have urged greater caution, told Cole to be wary, to pull back at the first sign of trouble. We swore the same oath as you, Doris. It's good to see you safe and well, Cole. I'm sorry. With all due respect, we Cursebreakers don't risk our lives because you commanded of us. We risk them because we believe in our cause. No one with doubts ever joins our ranks. The agony of removing the brand more than sees to that. We all know how much bravery that takes. Cole. I never doubted your courage. Only my ability to see it put to good use. Thank you 
for your faith in me. I'm not sure I deserve it. I sometimes wonder if I might prefer to risk death alongside the others than ask it of them. But I'm a curse breaker. I swore an oath too. I have a role to play, and I must trust that I'm the right one to play it. You will. In time. Quest complete. Nice. Alright. <clears throat> That's gonna be it for there. Only two seconds. That's not too bad. I mean, too big of a deal, so we'll just keep it for now. Um, and then we'll continue on. What else stuff we have to do? Actually, I think I'll go ahead and end it there. It's been a been a quick second. Uh, let's go ahead and end it there. Thank you guys for watching, and I do I do appreciate it, of course. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, peace.